Thanks very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as I said, I'm here to talk to you today about the fast track to AI with serverless. And I will be referencing uh, the book that was just mentioned, AI as a Service, in doing that, um, and draw some examples from the book. And the book is really a distillation of um, some of the work that we've been doing over the past couple of years with serverless and with um, machine learning services. Um, so we'll talk a bit about commoditization as well. Um, this slide is a little bit redundant now, so I won't go through that in too much detail. Just to note that for Theorem, we are leveraging serverless next generation cloud architectures um, to help deliver business results faster, uh, quicker, and hopefully better uh, in a lot of instances. We, do, we are involved in some uh, machine learning re research with Dublin City University, and that's around how you transition monoliths to uh, microservices using applied machine learning. So this is a toaster. Um, it was an interesting talk this morning about uh, having machines uh, make coffee for us. I'm not suggesting that we use AI to, to make toast for us. But this is a toaster. I can get this from Argos for 20 quid, something like that. It'll make lots of nice, warm, golden toast for me. This is also a toaster. Uh, this is a broken toaster. Um, I wouldn't want to make any toast out of this. But this toaster, which is completely useless, cost many, many times more to make than the previous toaster. And the reason is that this toaster was built from first principles. Um, so if you get a chance, you should check out the TED Talk by Thomas Thwaites, who explains the whole process he went through to build this toaster. And when I say first principles, I mean this guy went off and mined iron ore. He smelted the ore to make iron. Uh, he used that to build the frame of the toaster, the heating element, same for the copper wires. Um, and then he also had to go off and get some crude oil. Uh, he took that crude oil, he refined it, to make the plastic for the toaster covering. Plugged it in, flamed out, didn't work. What's the point of the story? The point of the story is commoditization. If you build from scratch every time, it's going to cost you more. Your results might not be so good. Whereas I can get a commodity toaster that does the job much cheaper. So we see commoditization uh, all the time in this industry. Um, if you're as old as I am, uh, you can probably wind back to the start of the century uh, when we cared about the underlying hardware. We were still racking kit uh, in data centers. Some people still do. A lot of us don't these days. Um, we cared more about the operating system, the runtime, application server, the entire stack. Uh, if you roll forward to, uh, the, the, through the first decade, uh, we got into virtualization. And most of us are dealing with virtual servers still running on premise. As we rolled through uh, this decade, um, we've given up control of a lot of that through commoditization. So we've added increasing layers of abstraction into the stack, and we've given control to cloud. So now our virtual servers, OS, is now all cloud managed, and we care more about containers and uh, runtime. That trend is now continuing. Um, with the advent of serverless technologies, things like containers are going to become less important. We're going to care more about putting code into production and care more about consuming commoditized services as a way of building our systems. Uh, so we're going up in abstraction and more and more commoditization. And this commoditization is happening for AI and machine learning as well as other areas of the stack. So if you can't read the, that's one of my favorite Far Side cartoons, by the way. If you can't read the caption there, it says, ha, Webster's blown his cerebral cortex. Um, and I think if you come at machine learning from scratch, and you try and do everything from scratch and, and get into everything, uh, you're in danger of blowing your cerebral cortex. There's a lot to get your hands around. There's a lot to get into your brain. So what I'm suggesting is that it doesn't always make sense to try and build our own toasters, and it doesn't always make sense to try and build our own models if commodity components are available that we can use to generate results quickly. Which is why we wrote this book, um, AI as a Service. It's available from Manning Publications. Um, and what we tried to do here was to deal, distill some of our learnings into um, an engineer's guide for how you get on board with AI and machine learning without necessarily needing to have a PhD in the subject. Uh, there's a discount code there if anyone would like to take that, DTX19. And I've got a few copies to give away uh, if anyone wants to ask me nicely after the talk. So um, this is Predict. I have a prediction for you. Um, serverless computing will become the de facto standard for enterprise platform development over the next three years. By that, I mean systems constructed entirely using cloud-native services. And this is a move towards fully utility computing. And that means increasing commoditization and consumption of commoditized services to solve business problems. Increasingly, these platforms will incorporate more AI. Uh, and these components will be built by using commoditized components, combining them, tuning them for a particular use case. 
So we need to understand how to get on board with these tools because they give us results faster. So um, I've done an exercise recently uh, in writing the book to go, of, go across the, um, the three major cloud providers. Apologies if you're a provider of a different cloud or if you have a, a different preference. These are the three market leaders, so I stuck to these three. Um, if you just look at the counts of services across a number of vectors, so compute, data storage, network, uh, developer, AI, machine learning, and so on, there's a huge range of services available. The numbers in green are the delta from doing this exercise in 2018. Now, of course, there's a bit of hype around this. Um, some of the services that they count are a little bit wafer thin, but there really is a bit of an arms race going on between the cloud providers to deliver these commodity services that we can take advantage of. So if we dig in to the AIML category, you'll see there's a whole bunch of services um, for image recognition, recommend recommendation systems, uh, voice chatbot prediction, language and training. Uh, so for example, AWS have recognition, uh, Google have Google Vision, uh, Google Video Intelligence, as you have Face Detect and Video Indexer. So really, to get on board with this, it's a good idea to just familiarize yourself with the, uh, the range of AI and ML services that are available. Um, and, and this is changing quite rapidly, so it is a moving feast. When should we use it? Uh, well, I'm sure there's some people sitting here that say, I'm not using anyone else's services. I can do it better myself. Maybe you can. Um, and in some instances, m maybe you should. Uh, but increasingly, you should be looking to use commodity services. So when the problem's not well understood, um, and we need to actually go off and do some research, then we need to use the standard kind of data science tool chain, modeling with TensorFlow, all of that kind of stuff. When the problem's more well understood, or elements of the problem are well understood, then we should be looking to use commodity services. Combine them together, or consume them, or Maybe there's a, there's a hybrid solution which uses some custom uh, models and then also uses the, uh, the cloud serverless model to operationalize those and combine them together. So um, in writing the book, it's fine just to understand the service catalog and what's available, but you really need to put that into a context, into a framework. So it's very interesting uh, to hear one of the speakers this morning talk about, you know, the custom model that I built here is only a small part of the picture. There's much more around this that you need to put together to actually operationalize your model and bring it to uh, an expectant public. Uh, so this is our attempt. Sorry, this is the AWS version. I couldn't do it for all three clouds, so I just picked the market leader. Um, this is our attempt to create a, a kind of um, thought framework around how these services fit together. So at the top of the stack, we've got our web application layer. Uh, so services like API Gateway and web uh, firewalls. Then we have uh, two categories of asynchronous and asynchronous services, typically using um, function as a service. So in this case, that would be AWS Lambda. Um, synchronous means uh, request response. Asynchronous is more fire and forget. Uh, underneath that, we have a, a layer of communication services and utility. So utility really around securing our platform. Um, and then a tier of AI services. So that's including all of the, the stuff that we just saw in that catalog. So image recognition, SageMaker, speech to text, text to speech, underpinned by a layer of uh, data services. So by that, I mean um, cloud storage, I mean serverless databases like Aurora, DynamoDB, and so on. We also need to, to bear in mind that it's not just about the running platform. Uh, we need to consider the uh, development support services because once we put our, our models and our, and our application into production, we need to, do, uh, we need to continually update it to build uh, new versions of it. So um, we need to treat all our infrastructure as code. So we're looking at things like CloudFormation in an AWS context, code pipeline, code build. Uh, and on the other end, operational support. We need to, just because our application is in production, we still need to monitor it. Uh, we still need to alert. We still need to understand the, uh, the, the operational parameters. So when we were writing a book, uh, we figured, let's take this architectural context and see if we can build a system really quickly with it. So we decided we build a cap detection system. Um, can we build a cap detection system in a day? The answer is just about, probably about two days it took us to build this, right? So uh, that's the, uh, the UI on, the, uh, on this side here. It allows us to put in a URL. Um, once we submit that URL to the system, it'll go off, run some image analysis on it, give us a word cloud so that we know what that page is about, and then return some pictures with a confidence interval. So, if you, so this is built using synchronous services for the, the, um, that API piece. Um, 
took into a work queue, which then um, has a crawler service that fetches the images and then feeds those into the recognition system. So the AI, the AI piece of this is in the AI services tier just there. Uh, results put into an S3 bucket. So that's, a, that's an example of how you can build a system very, very quickly that is usable um, externally, uh, calling and consuming uh, a custom, uh, uh, sorry, a, a commodity AI service. OK. Um, we then wanted to build a much more um, complete example. So we took the use case of social CRM. Uh, imagine you've got a number of products um, that you're selling in a number of territories. Those products are related to departments. You're getting feedback constantly all the time. It's a real problem to say, how do we, how do we handle that feedback and route it to the appropriate party? Okay, so the, the pipeline is we need to detect the language. We need to do automatic language translation, do sentiment detection, figure out what department it's for, and route the message onwards. Can you do that in a, in a serverless way using commodity services? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, so again, this is the AWS realization of that. Um, so we've got a number of input channels um, on, on, the, on the start of the pipeline coming in through an API gateway into a stream. We then run our commodity uh, language detection and uh, translation service on top of that, forward it on um, into a standard off-the-shelf sentiment analyzer, throw away the positive, keep the negative. Um, and from there, then we can do a classification to figure out what department this is in. And in this case, what we did was to use, a, uh, use Amazon's Comprehend service and do a little bit of transfer training uh, learning on it so that it, it understood our context. It's still a commodity service. It can be trained using an API that most engineers can use without actually having to understand the underpinnings of, uh, of what's going on there to get results. Um, so here's a, here's, a, here's a real world example, a real project that we did in 2017 around KYC. So KYC is, uh, is, an, is an interesting area. And what, uh, what the, the company we were working with at the time was trying to solve was how do you automate the process of taking a utility bill um, and automatically take off things like name, address, NPRN, uh, and other details so that doesn't have to be done by a human. So back then, way back in 2017, which is not that long ago, um, we built this using um, an, an off-the-shelf, open-source OCR library. Um, but then we had to do a whole bunch of math to figure out the, uh, the boxing. And then once we figured out what those, those boxes were and what those text groupings were, we had to then feed that through a classifier to say, is this a name, is this an address, um, and forward it on. Today, if we were to build that same um, service, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't need to do that. Uh, there is an offering from AWS called Textract from Azure called Form Recognizer and Google Cloud Vision OCR. So this is a great example of uh, commoditization. We would just wouldn't build it that way today. We would just plug into that service, and that would allow us to build that piece of functionality for our client cheaper, um, a lot, lot faster, and if I'm honest, probably better, because there's more smart people working for those companies um, than you can necessarily harness um, in, in that context, right? Uh, here's another example um, from a project we've done in Agritech. Um, for a Newland. There's some guys from Newland here today. Um, they're doing awesome work um, in optimizing fertilizer usage. Um, so there are EU restrictions that, that say you can only put this much fertilizer on your soil, you want to maintain the soil quality, and so on. So um, what the system does is place a sensor in the field, really in the field, in an actual field, um, and it pulls back data on nitrate levels, um, rainfall, all of that kind of stuff, along with uh, images. So we feed those images then into um, a SageMaker model. So this is a great example of how you can take a, um, a smart uh, model that you've trained yourself and operationalize it. So the challenge was to take this model, how quickly could we get that into a production system we could start, start to use. Using entirely serverless technology, we could do this in two weeks. That represents a significant cost reduction to, uh, to the guys we were working with, to our clients, right? So the point of this is, yes, you can do custom, but all of the operational pieces around the outside, the, the, the developer flow, the monitoring, getting data in and out of the system, you can look at using commodity serverless components to accelerate that transformation and accelerate that uh, time to market. OK, so in summary, we believe service computing will become the de facto standard, increasingly incorporating more AI components, customizing, combining, consuming off-the-shelf services, and developers will increasingly use these commoditize services without requiring necessarily the deep level of expertise that all of you guys in the room have today. I've got 16 seconds. Did I mention the book? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. <laughs>